Hey everyone, today we are breaking down the powerhouse architecture behind scalable web applications on AWS. If you have ever wondered how some sites stay lightning fast and reliable with thousands of users logging in simultaneously, this video is for you. Previously, I have made a video called Journey of a Request, where we walked through the full flow of requests from front-end to back-end. In this video, we are focusing on AWS-specific technologies and diving into each layer of an architecture that makes high scalable web applications possible. So grab a coffee, settle in, and let's follow a request as it travels through each layer of this AWS web app architecture. Let's get started. Let's kick off with Amazon Route 53, which is AWS's DNS or domain name system service. Imagine this as the GPS of our app. So when a user types say www.bytemonk.com into their browser, Route 53 translates that URL into an IP address directing traffic to our AWS infrastructure. It's fast, reliable, and can even route users to the nearest server based on their location, which is great for reducing latency. In real life terms, think of Route 53 as a traffic controller, deciding which road, or in our case, IP address, a request should take to get to the nearest server for a faster response time. Next up, we have AWS WAF or Web Application Firewall, and AWS Shield, before any request can hit our application, WAF and Shield jump into filter traffic and defend against DDoS or Distributed Denial of Service Attacks. WAF acts like a bouncer at the door, filtering out requests that look suspicious, like SQL injections or other forms of web-based attacks. Meanwhile, Shield is the DDoS protection guard, keeping out malicious flood attacks that aim to overload the app with fake requests. But why all the security? Because imagine you're running a high traffic e-commerce site during Black Friday sales. You wouldn't want bots or malicious traffic affecting real customers. WAF and Shield ensure your genuine users get a smooth experience even under attack. Once the request passes through the security guards, it reaches Amazon CloudFront, AWS's content delivery network or CDN. CloudFront caches static assets like images, videos, and CSS files closer to the user, thanks to its network of edge locations around the globe. In practical terms, let's say a user from Europe accesses a US hosted site. Instead of pulling every image all the way from the user server, CloudFront can serve cached copies from a European edge location, speeding up load time significantly. So for media heavy websites, this makes a huge difference in user experience. Now, the request enters AWS VPC or Virtual Private Cloud, our secure private network on AWS. Think of this as a gated community where different houses or subnets serve different purposes. VPCs allows us to logically isolate parts of our infrastructure, adding an extra layer of security. Inside the VPC, we have two types of subnets. A public subnet that hosts things like NAT gateways and load balancers. These are resources that need some level of exposure to the internet. And then we have private subnet that houses application servers and databases that should stay hidden from direct internet access. And this keeps your sensitive components secure. AWS's availability zones or AZs are physically separate data centers within a region. And they are critical for redundancy and resilience. In this architecture, our app is distributed across two AZs. The setup means if something goes wrong in one AZ, say power failure or network issues, the other AZ is ready to take over, keeping the app available without interruption. It's like having two branches of a bank in different cities. If one branch closes, the other one continues to serve customers. With multiple AZs, our app becomes resilient to localized failures, improving uptime. The request then reaches Elastic Load Balancers or ELB, which is a key player in ensuring smooth traffic flow. ELB's job is to distribute incoming requests across multiple EC2 instances, your application servers. So no single server gets overwhelmed. Imagine you are hosting a dinner party and ELB is the server who directs guests to different tables to ensure everyone's served efficiently. In AWS, the ELB ensures that if one server is overloaded, new requests are directed to a less busy one, maintaining a balanced load and preventing slowdowns. Now, we are at the heart of our app, EC2 instances. These virtual servers are where our actual web application code runs, handling requests and generating responses. But the cool part? They are inside an auto-scaling group or ESG. ESGs automatically add or remove EC2 instances based on traffic load. So if you're running an online store and suddenly a sales goes viral, the ESG will detect increased traffic and automatically spin up more EC2 instances to handle the load. 
When traffic calms down, it scales down to save cost. It's like hiring extra cashiers during a rush hour and letting them go when things quiet down. Amazon EFS or Elastic File System provides shared storage for all our EC2 instances. If your app needs a shared directory for assets like images or configurations, EFS allows all instances to access the same files. For instance, if you have a set of templates or shared assets that need to be available across multiple servers, EFS acts as common drive accessible from all EC2 instances ensuring consistency. Amazon Elastic Cache is our caching layer, reducing load on the database by storing frequently requested data in memory. For example, if users often request similar product details, Elastic Cache can store this in memory, so EC2 instances don't need to hit the database each time. This setup can make our app feel super responsive, as the cache delivers data in milliseconds compared to the potentially slow database queries. For structured data storage, we have Amazon RDS in the database subnet. RDS is a managed database service that supports popular databases like MySQL, PostgreSQL, and others. Here, critical data like user information, transactions, or product details is securely stored. With multi-AZ deployments, RDS has a primary database in one AZ and a backup in another. If the primary database encounters issues, the standby takes over seamlessly, keeping your data available. Lastly, we have Amazon S3 for storing static assets like images, backups, and other static content. S3 is highly durable and can hold unlimited data, making it the go-to choice for static storage. So say you have product images for an e-commerce site, storing this in S3 means they are reliably available. And when paired with CloudFront, they load faster globally. S3 also plays a crucial role in backing up important data, ensuring nothing gets lost. So let's put it all together. User's request hits Route 53, directing it to CloudFront. WAF and Shield check for malicious activity. The ELB distributes requests across EC2 instances in multiple AZs. The EC2 instances in the auto-scaling group process the request using Elastic Cache for faster data retrieval and EFS for shared storage. And if the app needs to store or retrieve critical data, it interacts with RDS in the database subnet. The process response returns to the user potentially served through CloudFront for even faster access to cached assets. And there you have it, a full tour of a scalable, resilient AWS web application architecture. The setup doesn't just ensure high performance, but also focuses on security, failover, and cost efficiency, making it perfect for today's high demand web apps. Whether you're hosting a small app or a massive e-commerce platform, this architecture has you covered. And if you found this breakdown helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. And hey, let me know if you want to dive deeper into any of these components. Until next time, keep building and scaling.